Okay, so thank you, Tulokwe. So, as I was saying, um, in nominal GDP, if you go to the market, now the GDP you calculate at ma current market, the current market price is nominal. But the GDP that you calculated based on the previous year's price is real GDP. I said a nominal GDP does not take inflation into consideration. But the real GDP takes inflation into consideration. So you can also say that real GDP is GDP that has been adjusted for inflation. But a nominal GDP is just basically a face value GDP. It's just a GDP as it is. GDP that, I mean, calculated at current value of the market price. That is dominant. So let's go to another concept, very important concept in macroeconomics. It's about stock flow, okay, where we we'll call um, stock variable and flow variable. Now, class, when you hear the word stock variable, okay, it means that variables, okay, anything variables or factors, okay, that does not change form, okay, over time. But when you look at flow, it changes form with time, with frequency. So when you look at, let's say, a flow variable, something that actually changes, it changes form with time, as time goes on, like it could be daily, it could be weekly, monthly, uh, uh, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, like that. You know, flow variable takes form, changes form every now and then. But when you look at stock, variable it is actually variable that is calculated at a particular point in time so the difference between a stock variable and a flow variable is that a flow variable actually is taken okay at a time interval or frequency of time but when you look at stock variable is at a point a point in time so let's take a take a, uh, for instance eg your income your income is a flow variable, okay? Your salary is a flow variable, okay? Your gifts, gifts is a flow variable, okay? Dash, the money that you have been dashed is a flow variable. But when you put all these things together, maybe in, a, in savings, or you put all these things together, you gather it together for a particular year, or for two years, or for three, or for five years, when you take the total value of what you have collected together in a year, we call it stock because it is calculated at that, at a point in time. So wealth collect it's collected over time. It's over time. So that is actually stock variable. Okay, people people is referred to as flow variable. It says flow variable, but population is a stock variable. Population is a stock variable. Let's take another example. Saving. Your regular saving with uh, Digicolo or maybe with any savings, um, any bank account, okay, is a flow variable. But savings is a stock variable. Investments, investments, okay, is actually a stock variable, okay. So there, are, I can go on and on and on. Different between a stock and, and a flow variable. Another concept, very, very importantly, that I need to, you know, touch tonight before we move on, very, very important concept, is GDP and GNP. Now, class, whenever you look at GDP, GDP is basically total monetary value of final goods and... Look at the word final. Final goods and services that is produced produced by the citizens and the foreigners living in that country, especially within a geographical boundary. So when you look at GDP, okay, GDP means gross domestic product. So you take into consideration what is being produced by the citizens of that country and the foreigners that stays in that country. So you look at GDP within the boundaries, the geographical boundaries of a country, or okay? But when you look at GMP, GMP, look at the word gross nationals, gross nationals, gross national product. From the word gross nationals, that means look at the word nationals, citizens, 
anywhere they have. You take into consideration their contribution from across the globe that makes the GMP. GDP is basically domestic, those that stay, both citizens and foreigners that live within that geographical boundary of that country, that GDP takes take, take those into consideration. But GMP only look at nationals, nationals, irrespective of where they have. Okay. So if you look at Nigeria in China, Nigeria in I mean in uh, in Tokyo, Nigeria in in, um, in Ghana, Nigeria in, in US. Okay, now we have Nigerians. Okay, actually in uh, uh, what's it called Senegal, Singapore. He put all of what they are doing together. Okay, bring them together. Okay, their monetary values and what Nigerians are also producing here in Nigeria. It forms our gross national product. Now, gross domestic product is different from gross national product. And NDP, which is net domestic product, is actually when you subtract depreciation. If you take depreciation from GDP, you get net domestic product. That depreciation is also called capital consumption allowance, CCA. If you subtract capital consumption allowance from GDP, you get NDP, net national product. If you subtract capital consumption allowance or depreciation from, from gross national product, you have what we call national, net national product, NMP. So that is just basically what macro, the sum of the concept. But there are things I have not said. Number one, that has to do with macroeconomic indicators. Okay, that has to do with macroeconomic goals, objectives. Class, let me quickly say this. If you want to know that somebody is not feeling fine, you touch the person's neck or the person's body. Okay, if you want to know, uh, maybe somebody, maybe somebody faints or somebody just fainted and they want to see whether the person is alive, you check the pulse of that person. Now, when you check the pulse, you see that it's, I mean, something is, I mean, is beating. You know, the person is alive. That pulse you check is a signal that the person is alive. Now, if you touch my body, okay, you touch my body to know whether it is warm, okay, in a way, you will know that ah, this guy is having temperature. That temperature, you, you, you felt it from your hand. But if you want to, to know the degree or extent to which I am hot, you use a, what we call um, a thermometer. Okay, you want to check the level of my temperature. So it will tell you, oh, this is actually the extent to this guy's temperature. If you want to know if I have BP, high BP or low BP, you use what we call barometer. You use it to check my body, to check me if I have high BP or not. These things, they are called, uh, they are called tools, tools that checks, okay, the signals, you know, in, 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 in medical, Time. They, they call them vital signs. These are the tools we use to check the vital signs of the bodies. Now, for you to also know if an economy is doing well, you check the vital signs of that economy. The vital signs of the economy, one, is the real GDP growth. Okay, how is the economy doing? If you want to know if this administration is doing well, I'll give you the indicators. Number one, check the real GDP growth. For the first quarter, when this, when this administration took over. Number two, check the unemployment rates. You check unemployment rates, these are indicators. Number three, you check the level of stock markets, stock, I mean, um, the, the level of stock markets. Check the level of stock market. Number four, you check the level of interest rates and inflation rates, okay? Then next, you also check, very importantly, very importantly, you check the GDP per capita. Check GDP per capita, you know, per person. How much is per person? Okay, GDP per capita means when you divide GDP by total, I mean, by total population of the country, you get GDP per capita, GDP per person. Okay, how much per person? That is GDP per capita. You check GDP per capita. This is very, very important indicators. So you will know, oh, is this economy in surviving? Are we actually in recession? Are we actually coming out of recession? Is this economy actually thriving or not thriving? These are the macroeconomic indicators. We call them macroeconomic indicators. You check the real GDP growth. You check unemployment rate. You check inflation rate. You check interest rate. Okay. You check this, um, the level of stock markets. Okay. You also check GDP per capita. This goes a long way to tell you. Okay, if an economy is doing well or it is not actually 
okay, doing well. Under macroeconomic policies, we have growth policies and stabilization policy. Now, class, for growth policy, anything that has to do with growth, you focus basically on growth policy. Anything that has to do with stabilizing an economy, you focus on what we call stability or, st I mean, stabilization policy. Um, to focus on growth policy, you have to look at one, okay, look at one, okay, the real GDP growth, okay, can we have full unemployment? Can we have real GDP growth? Anything that will increase employment in an economy, anything that will increase the output growth focuses on growth policy. Anything that will maintain exchange rates, anything that will maintain interest rates, anything that will maintain inflation rates, focuses on stability, stabilization policy. So we have to look at, okay, what areas drives the economy or drive the government, okay? There's also what we call political ideology or uh, political, uh, what, what's it called? Um, political, political ideology, yes. Each government is driven by, by an ideology. If you're a Keynesian, you believe that government intervention in every basic things matters. And if you're the classicalist, you believe that, okay, let's allow the government, let's just allow less affair, you know, demand, process of demand and supply to play out in the markets. So sometimes um, the kind of ideology that a government actually pursues, it depends, basically, you can take the root from the kind of policy that they are actually um, um, rolling out. So these are the few things um, I said I wanted to you know, talk with us about before uh, we look at static um, analysis. After static analysis, we look at what we call comparative, comparative static analysis. Okay, class. So let's start with um, comparative, static, uh, comparative analysis. Please hold on. You are in already, you are in. Okay, so class. So what are the goals of macroeconomic, um, macro, I mean, goals of, mac of macroeconomic for every, basically for every economy, they strive to gain full employment of resources over time, price stability, uh, favorable balance of payments, um, economic growth, and also um, even distribution of income. We'll call it um, equal distribution of income. So these are very, very important. And then class, the, the instruments of macroeconomic policies are, we have the fiscal policy, we, all, we have the monetary policy. If you mix both monetary policy together, the fiscal policy, we call it mixed policy. So let's go there. So I'm sending a question to us right away. Um, I will send the one, the assignment. Then I also send the one I'm going to do for us in class. So I'll send it to the two platform. So class, what do you understand by comparative static analysis? What comes to your mind when you hear comparative um, static analysis? Now class, um, number one, the word static, okay, um, is different from the word dynamic. Anything static basically is saying that, okay, this thing in a literal word, is not moving. Anything dynamic changes form with time. Okay. So now when, when we look at dynamic, you know, um, static analysis, 
okay, we are basically concerned with the state of equilibrium and the change. Basically, that is the dynamic part of it. But when you're looking at, you know, um, just basically static analysis, it doesn't change form. The model doesn't change over time. It remains what it is. But with dynamic analysis, it changes form, okay? It changes form. You look at what happened. Is there disequilibrium? Is there equilibrium? Okay, what is the rate of change? To what respects are we actually working or looking, looking into? Okay, so here tonight we look at basically comparative static analysis. So let's start with comparative static analysis. So we we'll look at macro, macroeconomic models. Okay, so let's start with the assignment. I, I just I want to go straight to the point. Um, okay, so this question says, given so the solution to assignment. So I use it to explain a lot of things to us. So this is solution to assignment. Okay, given that, given that, okay, given that, C is equals to alpha. Please, if I'm not correct, kindly, Correct me because I got this question from someone. So this is BYD. So giving us question one, then Y D is equal to Y minus T. Y minus T. Then T is is T naught plus T Y. That is equation three. Then you have M is equals to what? Capital M is equals to M naught plus M Y. George, thank you very much. Um, then equation five is giving us Y. Y equals to, okay, we have C plus I plus G plus x minus m. This is equation five. So the question now says, solve for equilibrium income. Solve for equilibrium income. Now, let me first of all, let me quickly say some things here. Class, anytime you are giving the consumption function like this, please, since I'm recording the class, I mean, not, I don't need to start writing because this is assignment, I want to solve it. If you're giving something like this, this is, consumption as a function of disposable income, okay? This YD is basically disposable income. And you can see YD is what? Y minus T. Now, this T is tax system. So when you see T naught, T equals to T naught plus T Y. This is a progressive tax system. If it is T naught minus T Y, it is regressive tax system. If T is just equals to ordinary T, just TY without this one, okay? If T is equals to, um, is equals to TY, just equals to TY, just TY, it call it proportional tax. If it is T naught plus TY, we call it progressive tax. If it is minus, we call it a regressive tax system. Now, let's go there. This is called, import function we call it import function this is this this import this m naught is actually fixed is import when the gdp or the value of income is zero the level of imports the level of imports the let me put it this way the value of imports 
when GDP or when equilibrium level of income is zero is M0. So this M0 is basically autonomous import. Okay, this is import. This is import function. This small letter M is marginal propensity to import. This small letter M is marginal propensity to import. This Y class is the GDP or income. Eric, I did not tell you this one. Class, this alpha here is autonomous consumption. This one here is autonomous consumption. Class, this beta here is called marginal propensity to consume. Marginal propensity to consume. This YED, YED is disposable income. And the disposable income is income that is left when tax has been deducted. So that is YD. This T naught is called lump sum tax. This T naught is called lump sum tax. This small letter T is called tax rates. If this Y is called GDP or income, if you now put the TY, if you now want to call the TY together, we call it proportional income. But ordinary T is tax rates. Why ordinary Y is income? But TY is proportional tax. Okay, now you've got to that one. M0, this M0 is fixed level of import when GDP or income is zero. That is, it is an autonomous import for the system. This small M is marginal propensity to import. This Y is GDP. This Y here is GDP or income. C is consumption expenditure. I is investment of firms expenditure. Class, this G is government spending. This X is export, and this M is import. So when the questioner says, find equivalent level of income, let me tell you what they want you to do. What they want you to do is this, substitute the values. Now, this is how you start. Mm, let's, do, let's do it step by step. Start with the consumption function. So since this is solution, start with the consumption function so that to make it easier for you, so you now say, sorry, so you say C, C is equals to alpha plus beta YD. But we know that YD is what? Y minus T. So C will now be, C will now be alpha plus beta. Now open bracket, YD is what? Y minus T. So this is what? Y minus T. So now let's multiply. So capital C will give us alpha plus beta y minus you know class this plus will multiply this minus to give us minus beta t okay this class will give us minus beta t now moving on class moving on but we know that this t here is what is t naught plus t y is t naught plus t y so capital c will now be alpha plus beta y minus beta into capital T. This capital T now is what? Is T naught plus T y. So this will be C equals to alpha plus beta y. Use this minus bit, this minus to open the bracket. So this will give you minus beta T naught minus this times this minus times plus is what is minus. So this is minus beta T Y. So we've sorted this now. We've sorted this. Now, we will now bring all of C. All of C here, okay? Bring it to this function. So now let's go there, class. So class, we have, we have C equals to, Please hold on. Okay, so we have, so let's substitute this now. So this is why, anywhere I see C, put all of this, bring all of this. So we have, this is, um. this is alpha plus beta Y minus beta t naught, okay, minus beta small letter t y, all of this now c, 
I, did they give us anything for I? No. So just put I the way it is given. Leave it there. Leave I alone. Is G, is G, leave G alone the way it is given in the question? Leave G alone. Then X, is X giving no export function? So leave it alone. Plus X. Is M giving? Yes, M is giving import function. Remember M as a sign, which is negative. So you say minus, open the bracket. You now put bring all of this inside. So this will be capital letter M, not plus small letter M, capital Y, close the bracket. Now see what is going to happen here, class. Please follow me. The next thing you're going to do, open the bracket here, open the bracket here. So this is what, this is Y equals to, had it been this way numbers, we would have been adding them to reduce the length of our work. So this is um, alpha plus beta Y minus beta C naught, okay, minus C naught, minus beta small letter C Y, okay, plus um, I plus G plus X minus M naught. This minus always respected to minus M naught minus small letter M Y. So now, why did I not call it like that? Because I wanted everything to be well expressed. Now we express everything. Class, anywhere you see why, anywhere you see why, bring it to the left-hand side. Anywhere you see why, bring it to this side. So there is Y here, there is Y here. Where is Y again? There is Y here. Well, let's start together. Let's do, let's do it together. So this is Y. So Y equals to... So this is why. So this is this is this y is the y is the y here. Okay. So this is plus by. If this plus by crosses equal sign, it changes the sign from plus to minus. So plus by comes here, becomes minus beta y. So it becomes minus beta y. Let's go again. Let's go again until you exhaust all the y. We carry this one. Let's go again. Oh, there is there is y here. What is the sign? Minus. If it come process equal sign, this minus become plus. So let's take this one. So this will be, this is b plus beta small letter t y. Let's go again. Where do we see y again? Where do you see y there? Where do we see y? Oh, there is y here. Oh, this is minus m y. It has negative sign. If it process equal sign, it becomes plus. So this is um plus plus M, Y. Are we done with all the Y? Yes. So what is remaining? It's remaining alpha. It's remaining this, 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 and this. So let's go there. So it equals to alpha, alpha minus beta T naught, minus beta T naught, plus I, plus G. Okay, we have we have plus G, we have plus X, plus X, okay, we have minus M naught. So class, that is what is remaining. We have alpha, see we have alpha here, alpha, we have minus beta naught, I, G, X, minus M naught. So that's what we have here. So the next thing we are supposed to do here, the next we are supposed to do is to, actually factorize. You can see why is here, why is here, why is here, why is here. So factorize everything. So what is common? Why is common, Abi? So bring the y out. So this will be one, because this one means one y. So one minus beta, let's go there, plus beta t, plus small letter m, close the bracket which is equals to, let's go there, which is equals to alpha minus beta T naught. Okay. Alpha minus beta T naught plus I plus G plus X minus M naught. The next thing, divide all through by what? By what you have by 
the side of y. So y will now become alpha minus beta t naught plus i plus g plus x minus m naught all over one minus beta plus beta t plus m. Now I want to quickly show you guys something. Let me show you guys something very, very important. Now, if I were you, this is what I'm going to do. I will rearrange, I'll just say, okay, y equals to, I'll bring alpha here, I'll bring i here, I'll bring g here, okay? Then, um, so I'll now bring, uh, I'll bring um, minus bit, beta t naught, I'll bring plus x minus m naught, so that it will follow exactly c plus i plus g, because this is autonomous consumption, divided by one minus, hey, let me show you something here, class. You can also do something like this. One minus, okay, let's be finished on first. One minus beta plus beta t plus m. Because this is an assignment, let me give you the last part. So this one cannot be y equals to, y equals to, okay, um, y equals to, so we have alpha plus i plus g minus beta t naught plus x minus m naught divided by one minus so that the lecturer even know that you know what you're doing. What is common here, beta? So this is beta into one minus t plus m. So you can stop here. So class, this is equilibrium level of income. You, you can stop here, you can stop here. Any question, please? Any question? Okay. Okay. So there's no question in the short room. So let, we can move on then. We can move on. Class, we call this, we call this equilibrium level of income. I can write this thing this way. Let me show you guys something. I can write it this way as one over, one over one minus beta into one minus T plus M. Then this alpha plus I plus G minus beta T naught plus X minus M naught class. What you have here, we call it income multiplier. Mm -hmm. Class, this is autonomous spending multiplier, or you can call it income multiplier. In case the question asks you, in case of exam, they said obtain the national income multiplier or the autonomous spending multiplier. It is one over everything beneath. One over everything downstairs. That is your multiplier. If question asks you, obtain... Let's say they say obtain government multiplier, investment multiplier, tax multiplier. That is when comparative static analysis comes in. So what is comparative static analysis? Comparative static analysis simply means a change in the endogenous variable based on, based on one of the changes in any of the component of aggregate demand. Class, you know, you know, because we needed to beat time. There's a lot of things I jumped. Let me quickly say this class. This Y is basically aggregate supply from the production of what you have obtained in the economy. This is component of demand. Okay? They are components of aggregate demand. Take note of this. This is consumption spending from household, investment spending from firm, government spending from government purchases from government. This is export. This is import. These are all components of aggregate demand. So when they say 
comparative analysis. They say a change in this, a change in Y, due to a change in either C, I, G, X, or M. That is, if government increases purchases or increases spending, what will happen to income? That is comparative static analysis. If anything changes here, how would it affect the change in the income, I mean, in the economy? How would national income equilibrium level change if there's a change in any of these components? Okay, that is basically comparative static analysis. Okay, can you explain the answer? Assuming we are told to explain what the answer means. Yes, I'm going to explain. And let's quickly show us this. Now, how do we explain this answer class? Take note of this class. This is a multiplier. This means that mm, your autonomous consumption, fixed investment, give, give, um, fixed government spending, your tax plus export minus import, divided by the, by the multiplier, gives you your national income equilibrium. So this is your national income equilibrium. Okay, as a function of C, I, G, C, X, and M. And this one over everything that is uh, in the numerator, I mean, in the denominator, gives you the income multiplier. So this is our income multiplier. So here is our K here. So we have one minus, one minus beta into one minus T. See, plus M. Class, how do I know if it is greater than zero or less than zero? Class, this is one. And this, there is no negative sign here. Okay. This definitely shows us, okay, tells us that this possibly is going to be one. Secondly, how do I also know that it's going to be positive, not negative? Class, this is one here. Anything I subtract from one here, it can never be up to this one. You know, class, you know, this is one here. Hmm? Anything I am taking here, Okay, anything I am doing here, if I get any value here, if I take it from this one, eh, it can never be zero. Because if it's zero, the whole thing is rubbish. It cannot be zero. So whatever answer is going to be, it will be less than this one. So this multiplier is actually greater than zero. Okay. And then it is what? It is positive. Okay, it is greater than zero. It is possible. Please ask me questions. I'm going to explain to you over and over until it sinks. I don't mind that I'm even recording it. Ask questions. That's why you are here tonight. Okay, so this is our income level. You see, I even took it beyond what you are asked to do. I've been able to extract this to tell you that this is your multiplier. This is where you're supposed to stop. I came here. So you can stop in your, you can write everything, even to this point, write it. You're also good to go. Okay. But um, if you want to stop here, you can stop. If you want to stop here, you can stop. If you want to stop here, you can stop here. Okay. If you want to include this, you can include it. Everything is correct. So let's move on to the next one. I hope, um, let me see. Okay, Catherine, I hope you are cleared with the question. Okay. This shows that, it shows that the national income equilibrium is actually positive. That is, is greater than zero. Okay. Um, so let's go there. Number two. Derive the government expenditure and tax multiplier. Class, did you see that? They said derive the government expenditure and tax multiplier. This is where, uh, what's it called? Comparative static analysis comes in. Derive the government multiplier and tax multiplier. They did not say derive the balance budget. If the question had said derive the balance budget multiplier, it would have been another different thing. But it said derive the government multiplier and tax multiplier. So let's first of all do government multiplier. Roman figure two now. Let's go there. Roman figure two. Now, how to, this is class. How to teach you the simple method to do this thing without you stressing yourself. Hmm? Without you stressing yourself. I'm going to teach you, uh, what's it called? The quotient rule as well. But let me start with this uh, simple method. Okay. And 
you don't even need to stress yourself in the exam. Class, if they say you should do multiplier, in this case, let's do government multiplier. Class, government multiplier, let me write it for you. Let me write it for you. Government multiplier, okay, is always denoted as GM. Class, this GM is a change, a change, okay, a change in Y with respect to change in G, okay? That is it, a change in Y with respect to change in G. That is government multiplier. That is differentiate Y with respect to G. That's what it means. Now, G is in the numerator. This is why. So how do we do this in a simple method? Let me tell you the simple method. So it's gonna be very long and I, expression, but it's very simple. Now, class, this Y here, it means, this Y means this expression. This expression means, okay, alpha divided by, Okay, let's use this. Okay, one minus beta plus beta t plus m. So this alpha divided by everything, okay? This i means, this i, you know, this is plus in between. So it is i divided by one minus beta, okay, plus beta t, plus M. Okay, next one is G. Is plus. G over one minus beta plus beta T plus M. You see what I'm doing? Because each of the component is over the denominator. But let's look at T. See what we're going to do for T as well. Okay, <clears throat> for T, okay, let's change. Let's move. <clears throat> okay, for, let's go there. For T, class, what is beside C? Minus sign, okay? So, minus sign. So, this is, um. okay, for T, Okay, this is minus, minus B, minus BT, all over one minus beta, plus beta T, plus M. Now the next one, the next one is X spot. It's plus X over one minus beta, plus beta T, plus M. The last one is input. So that is, um minus m over what? One minus beta plus beta t plus m. Okay, because I divided my notes into two. Now class, what am I trying to say? Why am I doing this? Is to make life easier for everybody. They say find government multiplier. You see, it will be very, very simple for you. Plus, differentiate y with respect to g. What will you get? Anybody can tell me the answer. Differentiate y with respect to g. What will you have? Unmute, you can unmute and speak. Or can write it. If you differentiate Y with respect to G, what will you have? Class, take a look at this. Let me let me show you something. Okay, class, take a look at this. Let me show you this. If you have Y is equals to 2X, what is dy dx? Class, what is dy dx? Okay, the answer is two, right? If you have dy, if you have y, thank you. If you have y equals to x, what is dy dx? It's one. Thank you, Josephine. If you have y equals to g, what is dy dg? Oh yeah, what is dy dg? Tell me. Correct. God bless you. Tell me Josephine is one. You guys are very, very intelligent. You can see it's one. So don't allow anybody to bubble you. So if you now differentiate this, if you now differentiate this, eh, why with respect to G? So they say government multiplier. 
GM. GM is, is changing Y respect to what? Changing G. That means you are differentiating Y respect to G. So that will give you one divided by everything that the, that the, numerator, uh, the, the, the denominator carry. One minus beta plus, okay, beta T plus M. You can see that this will be greater than what? Zero and it is positive. This is government multiplier. So why do you have to stress yourself to do quotient rule? This is very simple. Do you, I'm still going to use quotient rule. I'll use quotient rule for everybody so that you see it. But I'm just trying to see under examination condition, if you don't have that time to do quotient, please, this is very simple. This is correct, perfect answer from, from any standard uh, university lecturer professors. This is correct, okay? So if you cannot remember this one, please, this is correct. Do, do this one. Now, let me now do the quotient rule. Now, let's do the quotient rule. The quotient rule, we're going to make use of everything here. Let's say this is our y. You know, this is our y. Hmm? Okay. Okay, sorry. Let's finish up with the, the simple method first. So now let's do tax multiplier. Tax multiplier. Tax multiplier is TM. Class and TM is when you differentiate y with respect to T naughts. Okay, now let's go there. Oh, yeah, talk to me. Okay, where is T? Where is our T? Okay, class, differentiate y with respect to T. What will you have? Who can tell me? If you differentiate y, okay, with respect to T. Okay, we have y. Okay, <clears throat> we have y, we have minus. B T. You now do the Y, the T. What should be your answer, class? Okay. What should be your answer? I'm not seeing answer. Let me talk about Josephine, Catherine. Where are you guys? Blessed. What's the answer? D Y D T. The answer here will be what? Will be minus beta, because this has been differentiated. We're differentiated with respect to this. This is this is um one multiplied by this is minus one minus one is zero. Okay, so this will be minus beta. So class, if you are looking for tax multiplier, tax multiplier, yeah, it should be why the respect to what C is to give you minus minus what to give you this TM will give you minus beta divided by everything that in the numerator one minus beta plus beta C plus M. Class, you can see that this sign here is minus. Definitely, this will give you less than zero, and this is negative. So this is tax multiplier that is negative. Now, using quotient rule. Now, let's go and use quotient rule. We are done, no? So some people, for your assignment, you can write this one. For some people, you can use the quotient rule, depending on what your lecturer taught you in class. So using quotient rule, using quotient rule, quotient rule. If you want to use quotient rule, so let me teach you how to do that. Class, y is equals to everything here. Let's make use of this. Let's make use of this one. Okay, so we have alpha plus i plus g. Okay, minus beta t naught plus x minus m naught divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m. Oh yeah, class, let's take a look at this. Simple, simple, simple thing. Class, let's take a look at it. Using quotient, the rule is this. Mm? You know, <clears throat> to find the y, okay, if you have to find y prime, for instance, for um, quotient rule, it will be v, v u prime minus u v prime over what? Over v square. Okay, that's what, that's what we're supposed to have over b square okay any question regarding this any question please ask question because the moment i pass this i'm going to, i'm not going to come back so just put your question on the comment section i'm going to pick it up okay this is how you actually obtain this is actually the formula you use for um for quotient rule okay if you are doing quotient rule this is the formula and um, this formula is different from 
uh, the product rule. For products, okay, we take note of positive. But if it is quotient, we take note of negative. Then we divide by um, v square. Okay. So I want to be sure if everybody is actually um, following. So I want to do GM. Okay. Um, sorry, because the last recording, I was hearing some uh, um, some stuff. So we needed to avoid it this time around. Okay. Okay, sir. Oh, yeah, so you can omit, you can omit and talk. Okay, sir. The, the formula we are used to is V du dx, U dv dx. So this one seems a bit confusing, like... <laughs> okay. Okay, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Take a look at it. That one is like this. dy dx is equals to V du dx minus u dv dx over v square is the same thing this du dx is when you differentiate u that is this this dv dx is when you differentiate v so ibuku you are perfectly in order please if this is one you remember please don't go and write this one on. for some people they understood this one perfectly you, if this only what you understood, please stick to this. It's the same thing. You are not, you are not missing anything. Stick to this. Okay. Application I matter. Now let's go there. So I am doing, I'm doing GM. I want to do GM, which is change in Y with respect to change the word in G. So I'll not go there. Okay, I'm with respect to G. G is actually on top. That means, that means U is all of this. That means all of this is U. U is all of this. V is all of this. Because always U is on top. V is below. So all of this is U. All of this is V. Fine, let me just, let me break it down for you. So U is all of this. U is alpha plus I plus G. Okay, minus beta T naught plus X minus M naught. Class, this is U. Class, V is now, V is now denominator. The value of the denominator, okay, V is one minus beta, one minus beta plus beta T. Okay, plus beta T plus M. So now we are using, we have to look at, let's look at U prime. U prime, U prime means du dx. I mean, du dg. Now let's take a look at it now. So in this case now, let's, based on what IBK told us, you know, class, what IBK remembers is dy dx, I mean, v du dx minus u dv dx. Class, in now, and I want to tell you that anything, Thing you are, want to differentiate will now be will now take the place of x. You know you want to do x g, it will be dy dg, v du dg minus dv dg. If you are differentiating respect to t t, if you are doing task multiplier, it will be dy dt equals to v du dt minus u dv dt. If you are doing m not, it will be dy dm not equals to v du dm not. Minus u dv dm naught. I hope you are getting this. Is the application? Everything is not everything is not x x x. So it is what you are differentiating respect to. We are going to have here. So now, following what Ibuku just reminded us of, this the u will now be the u dg. So now this formula will now be the y with respect to the g equals what v the u dg minus u dv dg over what v squared so with this now you are going to be very perfectly cleared now let's go what is v what is v now first of all let's do we know v we 
I know you. Let's do do you do you do you the G. Oh yeah, class. Do you oh yeah? This is you. This is you. Differentiate this you with respect to G. This one is there G there? No. Zero. Is there G here? Zero. This has G. Do you the G is one. So do you G D is one. Is there G here? No G. Is, is zero. Is there G here? No G. Zero. Is there G here? No, no G. Zero. So it is one. Now let's do the V. So this is how they are doing it. So in, in class, this is the breakdown. So you now let's do dv dg. You will now come here. You will now come here. You want to differentiate v with respect to g. Class, can you find any g in this expression? No. dv dg is zero. Uh, let's bump. Yeah, let's let's plug it in. Let's plug it. So dy on dg will now be v. All of v is this one. All this one here is v. Now let's write it out. One minus beta plus beta t plus m. All of this is v. Now let's do du dg. Du dg. Du dg du, 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 is what? One. Let's, this is times one. Then minus minus u. What is u? All of this is u. All of this is u. Okay, I hope there'll be space enough. All of this is you. We have uh we have alpha. Okay, let's use um let's bracket it. We have alpha plus i plus g. Okay, minus beta t naught. Okay, plus x minus m naught. Okay, then dv dg is what? Is zero. Please permit me. Okay, this is times zero. So divided by divided by v square. You know all of this is v, so square. So we have one minus beta plus beta c plus m. So put the square on top. So class, let's follow the idea. Let's do it small, small, okay? All of this now, all of this, all of this multiply by one, okay? All of this multiply by one. So we have out there, all of this times one will give us one minus beta plus beta t plus small m. Okay. So one times all of this is all of this. Now, class, is zero? If this is zero, multiply by everything you know because there's no space so this zero multiplied by everything is what is zero divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m okay all square so this will give us one minus beta plus beta t plus m you know this zero is gone divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m all square now, class, you know, you can also bracket this. You know, this and this is the same. So if this one cancel one of this one, it's going to be remaining one. So this will give us, this one is one here. Then it cancel one of this. So you are going to have one minus beta plus beta T plus M. So class, this is your final answer for what? For dy dg. And it's what? It's greater than zero and it is positive. Please compare this and compare what we got earlier. Is it not the same thing? So this, this, look at what we got here, this, and look at all the process we have to follow to get this. So you can see. But, but let me quickly say this. This is a class. That is why I don't want to leave any stone unturned. For some people, they will master this one. And they will also master this one too. And in the case of exam, if they cannot finish this because of time, they can quickly use this one. But if you have the time, because I don't know what your, I mean, your lecturer used, if they used um, quotient true or just ordinary normal, normal comparative static analysis. So either of the two, fine. But because this is an assignment and you want your work to be very robustful, you can stick to this, you can do this and say alternatively, you cannot write alternatively, you now do this one. You know it's assignment. 
And when you do this assignment, before you submit it, please make a photocopy of it. If it is done, done in your notes, there's no need to do photocopy. But if you have to submit the assignment, please make a photocopy and keep a copy for yourself. So this is very important. So we have done the Y, the G. Now let's do, let's do tax multiplier. Let's go there. For tax multiplier, for tax multiplier, that is TM. Class TM is when you differentiate Y with respect to T naught. Yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. We'll come back to this place now. We'll come back here. So let's stick to what Ibuku reminded us of. This is very good. Class, I will now use, because I'm doing dy dt. So I'll stick to this formula. So this will now be, this will be dy dt naught equals to v du dt naught. Mm -hmm. minus u dv dt naught over v square. That is just it. That is just it. So you already know, you already know what is v. All of this is u. You already know what u is. You already know what v is. Now, but we want to do du dt naught. Du dt naught. Let's go there. So here now, u differentiate this expression, this u, with respect to t naught. Is there t naught here? No, zero. Is there t naught here? No, zero. Is there t naught here? No, zero. Is there t naught here? Yes, there's t naught. Now let's differentiate. Let's go there. Okay, how there? How there? So we have Please calm down and follow through. So we have the the y, sorry, do you the t naught? So that will give us minus beta. Can you see? Minus beta. Here there is no t naught zero. There's no t naught zero. So to give us minus beta. Now let's do let's do dv over the t naught. Dv over the t naught. This is v. I am differentiating respect to t naught. Is there t naught in this expression? No. So dv the t naught is zero. So now let's now go and apply it now. So this is we are going to apply it. This is v. Anyway, I see v. I'll put all of this. So V, this is, um, so we have dy, dt naught will be V is one minus beta plus beta T plus M. Okay. What is du dt naught? du dt naught, du dt naught is what? Is minus beta, minus beta. Please put it inside brackets, minus beta. Then minus, all of this is what? All of this is you. All of this is you. So, so we have open bracket. We have alpha plus IG minus beta T naught. IG minus beta T naught plus X minus M naught. Okay, multiply by zero. So divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m all square. Okay, because of time, I don't want to start doing all of this multiplied by zero is definitely zero. So this will not be, we are going to have minus beta plus beta t plus m, okay, into minus beta all over one minus beta plus beta t plus m or raised power word two. This cancel this. This one will cancel one of these. So you're going to have minus beta all over what? One minus beta plus beta t plus m. So class, you can see it is less than zero and it is negative. So let's compare this answer. Compare this answer 
with what we got earlier on, tax multiplier, is it not the same thing? It is the same thing. Okay? It's the same thing. So this is just the simplest form. Now, we are done. We are done with the question. We are done with that Roman figure 2. Let's go to Roman figure 3. Roman figure 3 says, what will be the effect of an increase in the marginal propensity to import. Hey, hey, this is a question. This is a question. Wow. 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 I say wow because this question is huge. What will be the effect of an increase in the marginal propensity to import? Oh, uh, okay. Let's go there. The grace of God will keep us through. Now, class, what is marginal propensity to import? Hmm. You know why I say hmm? So you now see why I say hmm. You know, marginal propensity to import is small letter M. And that's small letter. Okay, let's go to the main, to the main expression. Where's the main expression? Okay, this is the main expression here. Yeah. Marginal propensity to import eh, is actually beneath, which is denominator. So yeah, it will be a little bit, this will be a little bit tricky, but it's simple. The same thing we have been doing is what you're going to do. But in this case, you are differentiating respect to him. That question is very, very tricky. You know why? Why would a, an examiner ask you the effect of an increase of marginal propensity to, in, to import? But the examiner did not first, first ask you, okay, the uh, what's it called? Uh, the multiplier effects of that import. So to answer this question, you have to first of all do the multiplier effect of the of the marginal propensity to import before you can now your answer will now you will now use your answer to now determine the effect of an increase. So see what we are going to do here. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. See what we are going to do. Okay, so let me rewrite it for you. This is Roman figure three. Let me write that expression so that we won't be going back and forth. This is the expression again. Let me write it like this. Recall that y is equals to, y is equals to alpha plus i, please ask question, plus g minus beta t naught plus x minus m naught divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m. Now let's go there, class. Our emphasis is on this small letter m, -O, small letter m. So what we want to do is this. Eh? First, obtain, first obtain the y, obtain the y over the m. Mm -hmm. Obtain dy dm. This dy dm will now be the same thing we have been doing. V du over dm minus, you know, I hope you're correct. U dv over dm divided by v squared. Now let's go there. Let's go there. Now let's go there. Because this is marginal propensity to, to import. Now, we already know all of this that to avoid repetition. Now, let's do the UDM. So, the UDM, all of this that is up is a small letter M. My dear friends, there's a difference between capital letter M. Capital letter M is different from the small letter M. The small letter M is the marginal propensity to import. The capital letter M, it is the autonomous value of import itself. So, so it is not this M we are looking at. All. So, do you DM? Is there any M small letter M here? No. So, do you DM is zero. Now let's go to DV. Let's go to DV. Let's go to DV DM. DV DM. All of this is M. All of this is what? All of this is um, V. Now let's do DV DM. Is there M here? Yes. I'm differentiating M. I'm differentiating y respect to m. 
So I mean, sorry, I'm differentiating V in respect to M. So this will give us one. That will give us one. Now let's substitute quickly, quickly. So this will give us dy, dm, we give us v. What is all of this is v? All of this is v. So this is a um, one minus, oh, sorry, one minus beta plus beta t plus m. Okay, du dm, du dm is zero. So multiply by zero. Multiply by zero. Then minus, minus what? Minus u. Okay, all of this is u. All of this is u. So we have, we have alpha plus i plus g. Okay, minus beta t naught plus x minus m naught. Now, the VDM, the VDM is what? Is one. So multiply by what? One. So divided by, divided by one minus, one minus what? Beta plus beta T plus M. All what? All squared. So this times this will give us zero. So now let's focus on this part now. My, my last time, all of this will give us all of this. So this we're going to have, please pay attention to this part though. So this is um, dy, dm, we give us minus, this minus is coming from this minus here, all of this. So we have alpha plus what? Alpha plus i plus g, okay, alpha plus i plus g, Minus beta t naught, okay, plus x minus what, m naught. You know, the one, the one that is outside here, that multiply everything here, it's still everything here. So, divided by, okay, what is beneath? One minus beta plus beta t plus m. Or is part two. My dear friends, I want to show you guys some, something is about to play out here. Something is about to play out here. But we know that something, all of this here, eh? but we know that all of this, okay, let me quickly just show you something here so that let me break it down for you. You know, here, here, I can say, I can break this thing down to be like this. To be minus, okay, this this minus one that was there eh, divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m you know multiply by all of this now alpha plus i plus g minus beta t naught okay plus x minus m naught okay divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m. You know, this times this goes back to this. Minus one times this go back to this. But class, all of us can bear me witness that this, this expression is exactly this expression here. So meaning that this will give us minus one all over one minus beta plus beta t plus M multiplied by capital Y. So all of this is Y, all of this here, all of this is Y that we have before, all of this is Y. So ask me one question. Then ask, okay, what will be the effect? This is actually the tax multiplier. This is the multiplier itself. You know, if you stop here, you are correct. If you move further, you get, you get more marks here, okay? So here I can say, I can stop it this way. I can say, this and this is correct. I can also say, okay, fine, moving further. Okay, I can say um, minus into open bracket one, sorry, this is the minus is on top. Okay, minus beta 
plus beta t plus m, okay, y. So this is actually my marginal propensity to import multiplier. So they now ask you that what will be the effect of an increase? So now let's interpret that now. Let's interpret this. So if the interpretation of if marginal if marginal propensity if marginal propensity to import the import increases increases by let's check the hold on please okay so if marginal propensity to import increases by one unit Okay, the, the the national income equilibrium, the national income, national income equilibrium. Okay, will will fall by the value of the multiplier. By the value of the multiplier. So you now put this, you now put this in bracket. You know, because you have already said fall, you said fall. Don't put minus again. Don't put minus again. So it now be okay. One divided by one minus beta plus beta t plus m. Okay. Why? So you are good to go. Just stop like that. If if this increases by one unit. National income equilibrium will fall by this value of the multiplier. So if national income was, let's say it was, it was 250, if you multiply that 250 with this, it's going to be negative value. This will tell us the level at, the level for which national income will fall. Why did I use, why did I say fall? Because of the negative sign. So this is the answer. So let's do the last one. Suppose we include foreign trade. Suppose we include foreign trade. How will this modify the multiplier derived in question two above? Suppose we include foreign trade. How will this modify the multiplier derived in question two above? Class, when you, when you hear foreign trade, basically foreign trade, what comes to your mind? Class, remember, for there to be trade in the first place, there must be exports and there must be imports. So when you look at in when was the oh sorry. So okay, I think we started recording. Okay, when we look at the beginning of the class, we discussed the difference between GDP and GNP. Now in national income accounting, under national income accounting, whatsoever, whatsoever, the nationals, the citizens, the citizens of the country you are calculating for, whatsoever they are producing is taken as exports. The foreigners, even, even if they live in the domicile country, even if they stay in Nigeria, the foreigners that stay in, in Nigeria, their imputes to GDP is taken as imports. Okay? So class, if there is foreign trade in the model, how will what we obtain in Roman figure two, how will it change? Okay? Let me open up for discussion. Oh yeah, let's stop. I'm giving us just let's just do five minute talk and then we'll continue. Oh yeah, 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 yeah.